Hi everyone, it's Professor Primerton. In this video, we're going to talk about derivatives of complicated functions using the chain rule. So in the previous video, we talked about the chain rule, and in particular, we talked about the general power rule that allows us to find the derivative of composite functions where you have a function raised to a power. In this video, we're going to talk about how do you use the chain rule along with the product and quotient rules to find the derivative of more complicated functions. So derivatives of complicated functions. The chain rule can be used to generalize the basic differentiation rules that we learned earlier in the course, including derivatives of exponential and logarithmic functions. So we're going to list the general derivative rules for convenient reference. So the general power rule says that if you're taking the derivative of a function that's raised to a power, then I'll notice that this is a composite function. So we know from the chain rule that if we take the derivative of a composite function, we have the derivative of the inside function and the derivative of the outside function. The derivative of the outside function is u to the n. So we know that the derivative will be n u to the n minus 1. So the u is the f of x, which is the inside function. And so we know that we also have to take the derivative of the inside function, which is f prime of x. So the power rule says you take the power to the front and make it a coefficient. You leave the inside function as it is, unchanged. But then you also have to subtract 1 from the power, just like the other power rule that we talked about earlier. And then you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. But we also have the general derivative of a logarithmic function. So the derivative of the natural log of a function, inside the natural log, you have a function for the argument. The derivative would be 1 divided by the argument. So it's the 1 divided by u, where we call u equals f of x. And then you also have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is f prime of x. So it's 1 divided by the argument, the inside function, times the derivative of the inside function. And then the general derivative of an exponential function so the derivative of e to a power, where the power is a function, well, the derivative of an exponential function is itself. That's the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is the exponent because it's a function. So you have to multiply by f prime of x. So in the next example, we're going to combine the chain rule with the product and the quotient rule so that we can find the derivative of a product or a quotient that involves composite functions. So if there's one thing to notice about these three formulas. None of them are called the chain rule. There isn't a formula that's associated with the chain rule. The chain rule is needed to find the derivative of the composite function, where you are taking the derivative of the outside function and the derivative of the inside function. So this f prime of x, each time in the formula, is representing the derivative of the inside function. And then you have these formulas for the derivative of the outside function, depending on what type of function you have, a power function, a logarithmic function, or an exponential function. Let's look at example eight, product and quotient rules with the chain rule. Use the product rule, quotient rule, or chain rule to find the derivative of the following functions. Do not simplify the result after finding the derivative. So number one, y equals the quantity x squared plus three times the quantity negative two x cubed plus x all to the fourth power. Notice that you have a product of one function and another function. So you have to use the product rule to find its derivative. So to find the derivative, y prime is equal to, the product rule said, keep the first function the same, so x squared plus 3, times the derivative of the second function. So d dx of the second function is negative 2x cubed plus x all to the fourth power, plus, because it's the product rule, now you keep the second function the same, negative 2x cubed plus x to the fourth power, times the derivative of the first function. So d dx of the first function was x squared plus 3. So now let's find out what the derivative is of the first function and the second function. So y prime is the first function stays the same, x squared plus 3 in parentheses, times the derivative of the second function. Now the second function is the composite function because it's not just x to the fourth power, it's a function raised to the fourth power. So you have to use the general power rule. So the power rule said you take 4 and bring it down to the front. That would be 4 times, now you keep the inside function exactly as it is, so negative 2x cubed plus x, and now you subtract 1 from the power. So it becomes 4 times the quantity, negative 2x cubed plus x to the third power, times, now because of the chain rule, you have to take the derivative of the inside function. So d dx of the inside function was negative 2x cubed plus x. So you have to take the derivative of the inside function, plus the second function stays the same, negative 2x cubed plus x to the fourth power, times the derivative of the first function. The derivative of the first function, it's not a composite function, it's just x squared plus 3. So you can just take the derivative of each term separately. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of 3 is 0, so just 2x. So now we have one derivative left to find, and it's the derivative of the inside function after we use the general power rule. So y prime is the first function, x squared plus 3, stay the same, times the derivative of the second function was 4 times negative 2x cubed plus x to the third power, now, what's the derivative of the inside function? It's the derivative of negative 2x cubed, that's negative 6x squared, and derivative of x is 1. So you'll have negative 6x squared plus 1 in parentheses, because you want to multiply by the entire derivative of the inside function. And everything else stays the same, plus negative 2x cubed plus x to the fourth power, 
times 2x. And now that you've found all the derivatives, you don't have to simplify your answer. That's the answer. So number two, this time the function is y equals x to the fourth power times natural log of the quantity, 1 plus 2x to the fifth. So again, notice that you have two different functions that are being multiplied together. You have x to the fourth is the first function, and the second function is the natural log of 1 plus 2x to the fifth. So you have to use the product rule again to find its derivative. So again, the product rule said y prime is the first function unchanged, x to the fourth, times the derivative of the second function. So that would be derivative d dx of natural log of 1 plus 2x to the fifth. That's your second function. Plus, because of the product rule, the second function stays the same now. So natural log of 1 plus 2x to the fifth times the derivative of the first function. Well, the first function was x to the fourth. So d dx of x to the fourth. So now I'll find the derivative of the first function and the derivative of the second function. So y prime is so x to the fourth, unchanged. Now take the derivative of the second function. Notice the second function is the composite function. It's not natural log of x, it's natural log of a function. So the rule is one divided by the argument of the logarithm. So one divided by one plus two x to the fifth power times the derivative of the inside function, which would be the derivative of the argument. So d dx of one plus two x to the fifth plus, now the second function stays the same, natural log of one plus two x to the fifth times the derivative of the first function. The derivative of the first function is just a power function. So the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed. And so we have one derivative left to find. It's the derivative of the inside function of the logarithm. So y prime is x to the fourth times the fraction, one divided by the quantity one plus two x to the fifth in the denominator, times, what's the derivative of the inside function? The derivative of one is zero, and the derivative of two x to the fifth is 10 times x to the fourth. And now everything else just stays the same. Plus, second function with natural log of one plus two x to the fifth, and the derivative of the first function was 4x cubed. So you can do a little bit of simplifying if you want. You can take this fraction, which is 1 divided by 1 plus 2x to the fifth times 10x to the fourth. You can make that one fraction. So x to the fourth times 10x to the fourth is in the numerator, divided by 1 plus 2x to the fifth in the denominator, plus 4x cubed times natural log of 1 plus 2x to the fifth. So we've done a couple problems using the product rule. Let's look at number three y is equal to e to the negative 2x in the numerator, and in the denominator you have x squared plus 1 all to the third power. So notice that you have a fraction of two different functions. Now yeah, the denominator is a composite function. You have x squared plus 1 is the inside function that's being cubed, but overall this function y is a quotient of two functions. So you need to use the quotient rule. So from the quotient rule, we know the derivative of y, so y prime is the denominator, so x squared plus 1 cubed, unchanged, so that's the low, times the derivative of high, or derivative of the numerator, so d dx of e to the negative 2x, that's the high, minus, because it's the quotient rule this time, high, e to the negative 2x is unchanged, times the derivative of low, so derivative d dx of x squared plus 1 cubed, and then don't forget that the quotient rule is really a fraction, it's all divided by the denominator squared, so Quantity x squared plus 1 cubed was the original denominator, but now you have to square it. So again, the quotient rule is just helping us set up what the derivative will look like. We still have to take the derivative of high. We still have to take the derivative of low. And when we take the derivative of high or low, we might have to use the quotient rule. So let's take the derivatives. We have x squared plus 1 cubed is unchanged, because that's low. What's the derivative of e to the negative 2x? It's not just e to the x, it's e to a function. So you have to use the chain rule. The derivative of the outside function is, what's the derivative of e to the u? It's e to the u, where u is the negative 2x. So it, the derivative of e to the negative 2x is itself, and the inside function was negative 2x. So d dx of negative 2x, subtract. Now you keep the high the same, the numerator. So e to the negative 2x stays as it is, times the derivative of low. So the derivative of low was, it's a composite function. So you have to use the chain rule and power rule. You have a function that's raised to the third power. So think of the x squared plus 1 like it's u. So it's u cubed. What's the derivative of u cubed? It's 3. You keep the inside function as it is, x squared plus 1, and now it's squared. But then again, don't forget about the chain rule. The chain rule says you have to take the derivative of the inside function. So the derivative of d dx of the inside function was x squared plus 1. So that's that part. And now the denominator. Whenever you have x squared plus 1 cubed and then that whole thing is squared, you need to multiply the exponents. So that makes it x squared plus 1 to the 6th power. And so we have a couple of derivatives to find. We have the derivative of negative 2x because of the chain rule. And we have the derivative of x squared plus 1 because of the chain rule. So y prime is x squared plus 1 cubed times e to negative 2x. What's the derivative of negative 2x? It's negative 2. So multiply by negative 2. Subtract e to negative 2x 
times 3 times x squared plus 1 was the inside function squared. And now what's the derivative of the inside function? Derivative of x squared is 2x, and derivative of 1 is 0. And then keep the denominator, x squared plus 1 all to the 6th. So we've taken all the derivatives using the chain rule. So this is the derivative of y. You do not need to simplify your answer. All right, number four. This time the function is y equals this fraction, 3x plus 1, divided by negative 2x minus 3, and that fraction is raised to the second power. So what rule do we need to use here? Well, it's a function that's being squared. So you need to use the power rule first to set up the derivatives. So y prime is, how do you take the derivative of this function? Well, think of the inside function like it's u. So you have u squared. So bring the coefficient down and make it a 2, and you keep the inside function the same. So don't forget about it. You have to take the derivative of the inside function because of the chain rule. So you have to take the derivative of 3x plus 1 divided by negative 2x minus 3. And so notice that this is a derivative of a fraction or a rational function. So you have to use the quotient rule now. So 2 is already on the outside times 3x plus 1 times negative 2x minus 3. But we have to take the derivative of the inside function using the quotient rule. So quotient rule said you take the low, so negative 2x minus 3, times the derivative of high, so d dx of 3x plus 1, subtract because we're using the quotient rule. High is unchanged, 3x plus 1 in parentheses, times derivative of low, so d dx of negative 2x minus 3, all divided by the denominator, which was negative 2x minus 3, and now you square it. So now we have a couple of derivatives to find from the quotient rule. We have the derivative of 3x plus 1, that was the derivative of high, and we have the derivative of negative 2x minus 3 because that's the derivative of low in the formula. So y prime is 2 is already a coefficient. 3x plus 1 times negative 2x minus 3. That was the inside function. And now the derivative of the inside function was quotient rule negative 2x minus 3. What's the derivative of 3x plus 1? That's 3. That's the derivative of high. Minus high 3x plus 1 in parentheses. And the derivative of low, derivative of negative 2x minus 3 is negative 2. So multiply by negative 2. And then again, divide by negative 2x minus 3, all squared. And so now that we've taken all the derivatives using the power rule and the quotient rule, and we also use the chain rule, this is the derivative. Okay, so let's try one more. Number five, the function is y equals e to the 3x power times natural log of 5x plus 7. So what is the overwhelming rule that we need to use? It looks like you have a product of two functions. e to the 3x is one function. Natural log of 5x plus 7, that's the second function. So let's set up the derivatives using the product rule. y prime is, first function stays the same, so e to the 3x, times the derivative, so d dx, of the second function. So derivative of natural log 5x plus 7, plus because it's the product rule. Now you keep the second function unchanged, natural log of 5x plus 7, times the derivative of the first function, so d dx of e to the 3x power. And so we have a couple functions to take the derivative of. We have the derivative of natural log 5x plus 7. That's a composite function, so we know we have to use the chain rule. And we have the derivative of e to the 3x. It's not just e to the x, so it's also a composite function. So it will also require the chain rule. So y prime is e to the 3x. The derivative of natural log of 5x plus 7. We know the formula is 1 divided by the inside function unchanged, 5x plus 7 in the, den in the denominator, times the derivative of the inside function because of the chain rule. The derivative of 5x plus 7 plus natural log 5x plus 7 times the derivative of e to the 3x. Well, it's an exponential function, so the derivative is the same, and it's base e, so we don't have to multiply by natural log of the base. But it's not just e to the x, it's e to a function. So you have to take the derivative of the inside function, which is 3x. And so now you have a couple derivatives to find from the chain rule. y prime is e to the 3x times 1 divided by 5x plus 7, that's unchanged. What's the derivative of 5x plus 7? It's 5, so multiply by 5 plus natural log 5x plus 7, e to the 3x, and then what's the derivative of 3x? That's the derivative of the inside function. It's 3, so multiply by 3. And so this is the derivative of this product of those two functions, the exponential function and the logarithmic function. So again, you don't have to simplify your answers after you take the derivatives, but make sure you take all the derivatives in the problem. You have the quotient rule. Make sure you take the derivative of high and low. If you have the product rule, you're taking the derivative of the first, in one term, and you're taking the derivative of the second in the other term. But most importantly, if you're taking the derivative of a composite function, make sure you always take the derivative of the outside function and you multiply by the derivative of the inside function. It's a very common mistake to take the derivative of the outside function, but then forget about the inside function's derivative.
So this is a good place to stop our video after we talk about the derivatives of complicated functions using the product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about implicit differentiation.